So, the eclipse happened. I hope you all enjoyed it, because I didn't see it. But was the eclipse problematic? Let's find out. So the actual article is called American Blackout, written by Alice Ristro, or Ristroff, I can't be bothered to figure out how to pronounce it. The actual article is a meandering hunk of nonsense with no focus or any basis in reality whatsoever, aside from just calling everything racist. So often the author goes into these nonsense ramblings about the super racist history of these places that the eclipse touches. She's trying to make the point about how the eclipse should remind us of our past. I, I don't know why. I mean, it's just a rock that moves in front of the sun. There's no higher meaning here. Go home, Alice. You're stupid. But there's the fact that Alice Ristro, who I'm going to refer to as Alice in Wonderland, can't help but list the demographics of the states and towns the eclipse passes through. Apparently, it cuts through areas that have too few black people. Why do we need to know this? Well, the answer is obvious, isn't it? The moon is an alt-right racist. I mean, have you ever seen how white the moon is on a full moon? It's pretty freaking white. But what is an eclipse when the moon moves in front of the sun, but the moon wearing blackface? Also, you know what else the eclipse reminds us of? That's right. The fact that the Constitution counted black people as three-fifths of a person for counting House of Representatives seats. Alice, Alice, Alice in Wonderland. I saw your bio. You teach constitutional law. You should know better. The three-fifths compromise had nothing to do with black personhood and everything to do with House Representative seats. Slaves didn't meet black people. There were white people who were slaves. There were Native Americans who were slaves. And in fact, it was the abolitionist North who didn't want them to be counted as people at all because that would give them more seats in the House of Representatives. Furthermore, Alice in Wonderland completely forgets what her article was originally about when she goes on a tirade against the U.S. Census. Did you know that it didn't originally have a category for blacks? Well, I for one didn't care. Good lord, even goldfish would find this unfocused. Oh, and Black Lives Matter. Let's shoehorn them in too, because as it turns out, the moon is a race issue. Ferguson is not in the path of totality because of that alt-right racist moon. Grrr. And then there's the fact that the solar eclipse passes through Nebraska. Can you guess what Alex went on about now? Go on. Guess. I said guess. That's right. Bruce Stringsting's album Nebraska. Because that's completely relevant to the alt-right racist moon hating black people. Or perhaps the most amusing thing is the recurring theme of totality. Did you know the path of totality, the geographical areas where the moon completely covers the sun would be visible, is a racist term? That's right. According to our dear friend Alice in Wonderland, totality refers to the purity of the white race in Jim Crow South without a drop of black blood. It refers to General Sherman's march of destruction through Georgia, his path of totality. Wasn't Sherman a Union commander? Racism! The KKK also wanted totality of whiteness. Totality is an exclusionary racist term, and NASA should stop using it. <sighs> Look, black people aren't victims, and they certainly aren't victims of any solar or lunar racism. So, so just drop this nonsense. This isn't going to help anyone. The solution is simple. You've just got to stop being the victim. And it doesn't matter if you, are the vic if you are a legitimate victim or not. As long as you keep acting the part of the victim, all you're going to be doing is just making more victims. And this is going to go on for the foreseeable future. Just, just stop. It doesn't have to be this way.